Hey everybody and welcome to the first 2011 TJ's College Football M Vlog. It used to be a blog, I used to write, and then I would send it to Chris Cox. Now I'm making videos, and we're going to talk about it, and we're going to move into the 21st century. I'm really excited about it. It gives me a chance to use my eyesight. So without any further ado, let me welcome you to this year's college football season. I'm really excited about it. It's just nice to get away from talking about scandals and federal inquiries and shady agents and all the things that we've been dealing with in the offseason for, for football and talk about real, actual football. So let me start out with doing the first contender and pretender for the 2011 season. First contender for the offseason. This was a bit hard. I had to think of who I wanted to be this offseason's contender. This year's award is going to go to quarterback Andrew Luck from Stanford. Many projected Andrew Luck to be the first round, first number one pick in the NFL draft. Andrew Luck turns it down to go back to school for one more year and finish his degree at Stanford. A lot of people question the idea, what if you get hurt, you're missing out on your chance of lots of money. Andrew Luck thinking about his future, wanting to finish his education. And not only that, Heisman frontrunner this year and part of a top 10 squad with Stanford again. So, keep, uh, keep your eye out for this guy. He's a pretty good football player. The party most responsible for what needs to be fixed is none other than the NCAA itself. The NCAA is literally the pretender because they are only pretending to deal with these issues. There are major problems facing college football, and they are major ones on the horizon. We haven't even talked about the idea of super conferences and conference realignment. The NCAA needs to act quickly to take charge of the situation before TV contracts and money run the NCAA. Change in college football needs to happen, and it needs to happen fast. I'm going to give you two games to watch this week. First game is number two Oregon versus number three LSU in Dallas, Texas. Well, and this game might be interesting just to see which of its 100 uniforms Oregon wears. But it's also worth it to see a player named LaMichael James running back for the Oregon Ducks. This guy is probably the closest thing to the flash that we have in college football. Fast, quick, has the moves, is going to be an amazing player in the NFL, and he's part of a super fast Oregon offense. Wants to run as many plays as possible and is an exciting to watch. Oregon's offense is coming up in a, in a, against a good defense in LSU, but their offense is just going to be a little bit too much for it. They're going to win a close one over LSU in Dallas. Now, the other game to watch, number seven, Boise at Georgia in the Georgia Dome in Atlanta. There's a lot on the line for both teams. Boise State has just moved from the WAC into the Mountain West Conference. So they're still in a non-BCS conference, which means if they want to be part of the national title talk, they're going to have to win every game. And as much as possible, they're going to have to blow some teams out. Let's look on the other hand. Mark Richt, coach at Georgia, has been on the hot seat. Only 14-12 and 12 over the last two seasons and coming off of a 6-7 and seven season in 2010. He needs wins, and he needs wins fast. Unfortunately, Boise State not only has more to play for, but they have more to play with, especially in star quarterback Kellen Moore. And I'm afraid Boise is going to win this one very comfortably and start Georgia's season off 0-1. Now, I know most of the people listening on here are from my lovely home state of South Carolina, which I have just made my way back into, and I'm already feeling better. So we're going to look at three teams from South Carolina each week. We're going to look at the Gamecocks, we're going to look at the Tigers, and we're going to look at my Furman Paladins. Number 12 South Carolina is starting off against East Carolina in Charlotte, North Carolina. These are probably the highest expectations for South Carolina ever. They're full of talent. They have players like running back Marcus Lattimore, wide receiver Alshon Jeffrey, Devin Taylor on the defensive line, and new phenom Jadavian Clowney. And if you've been keeping up with anything college football, you might be a little familiar with Mr. Clowney. I'm going to predict that South Carolina will win, but want to warn Gamecock fans that this victory might not be as comfortable as you would like it. And you'll probably see ECU, ECU put some points up at, on the scoreboard. They are very good at that. 
But don't worry, the Carolina offense is more than a match. Clemson versus Troy. Clemson is switching some things around on offense. Had some trouble last year. Going to a more fast-paced offense like Oregon's that we mentioned earlier. They're breaking in a new quarterback, Taj Boyd. Uh, got up to got off to a little rough start last year. Uh, should be better adjusted this year after having some practice and some more time to get adjusted to the new offense. Having Andre Ellington in the backfield doesn't help. Very good running back. Now Troy is known as a very high-powered offense, at, at least in the Sun Belt where they play. And that might hurt the Tigers a little bit as they're replacing some big names on defense like Daquan Bowers, who is now playing at the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. However, Tiger fans, you can also rest easy. I'm predicting the Tigers to win in a bit of a shootout, but they'll start 1-0. Furman at Coastal Carolina. Big change is coming at Furman this year. New head coach Bruce Fowler. Now, Bruce Fowler isn't a new face at Furman. Bruce Fowler spent many, many years as an assistant coach at Furman. In fact, some of, his, some of Furman's best years were with him as an assistant coach. 1988, he was an assistant coach in Furman's national championship year. And 2001, Furman's latest uh, appearance in the national championship game, Bruce Fowler was the defensive coordinator. So now he is back as the head ball coach. Offense for Furman is going to change up a little bit. It's going to be old school smash mouth, run the ball most of the time. Defense is going to be aggressive and blitz heavy. Personally, I love it. But it's going to be a little tough running that offense and defense with personnel who are uh, recruited at Furman to play a little bit different type of game. So there's going to be a little bit of an adjustment period for Fowler and his staff. And they've got a tough test out of the gate. Uh, Coastal Carolina, very good football program, very early in its, uh, in its I guess, legacy. Uh, playoff team in 2010, despite some, a somewhat mediocre record, and they're very tough at home. But, and this may be my bias coming out, I am picking Furman to gut it out for their new ball coach, Bruce Fowler, and win in a close one. So anyway, I think Wisconsin and UNLV are still playing. I don't have a lot of interest in this game. Actually, I don't have much at all. But it's college football. It's back. The season's here. Enjoy it. Go watch the games. Look out for what I told you about. Have a good one.